So we've done a lot of work to solve the diffusion equation. We were solving ut equals duxx. We had this uh, homogene homogeneous Dirichlet boundary condition so that the uh, pipe of length L have these two large reservoirs at the end so that the concentration of the dye at the ends of the pipe go to zero. We also specify some initial condition of the dye in the pipe. Here it was quite general, f of x. And our solution then was this series for u of xt with these coefficients b sub n. And the coefficients are given in terms of this uh, initial concentration of the dye. So in this video I want to work an example where I tell you what the initial concentration of the dye is and then we solve, we see what the solution looks like. So let me draw a picture of our pipe. So here is uh, the pipe. It has a uh, very large reservoirs at the end, right? And it's uh, starting at zero and ending at L, so a pipe of length L. So a natural uh, first uh, look at this uh, solution for an initial concentration is to put all of the dye initially in the middle of the pipe. So we're going to put all of the dye right in the middle. And that will be uh, at L over 2. Okay. Um, <clears throat> then we're going to look to see how does this dye then diffuse outward to the right and to the left. It will be symmetric. And eventually the mass of the dye that we've put into the pipe will diffuse out into the reservoirs in the end. Um, how do we model that? Well, that's the initial, this is at t equals zero, right? This is our f of x, so we have to write down an f of x. Um, what should it be? Well, this <coughs> die here is uh, only in the middle, so u should be zero everywhere in this pipe except at position x equals L over 2. But the uh, dye has some mass, right? So the concentration is the mass per unit length, so that if we integrate over the length of the, of the pipe, we should have some mass. We can call that mass M0. So this is some function that when you integrate over the length, you get a mass of M0, but it's zero everywhere except at L over 2. So the way to model this is by our Dirac delta function centered at L over 2. A very nice application of the Dirac delta function in this problem. We saw this before when we discussed impulse forces uh, when, and we did the Laplace transform technique for ODEs. So now we're modeling the concentration of the dye as a Dirac delta function. All the mass is at a single cross-section of this pipe. Okay, then we can calculate the B sub n's. So B sub n is equal to 2 over L times F of x. So the m naught can come out. So 2 m naught over L times the integral from 0 to L, the Dirac delta function centered at L over 2, times sine n pi x over L dx. Now here comes the beauty of the Dirac delta function in, mo in modeling. Um, besides being a beautiful model for the dye being concentrated in the middle, it also makes the integration trivial. Uh, remember that when you integrate a function against the Dirac delta function, it just plucks at, picks out the value x equals L over 2. So this is 2 m naught over L times sine 
x equals l over 2, so n pi over 2. Okay, <clears throat> that's the solution for b sub n. Um, if we're just interested in, in the longer time behavior, longer time here means that t is uh, somewhat larger than l squared over d because this exponential function uh, when, when n is, is uh, larger than 1 will cause this, the terms to go to 0 very fast. So the diffusion time is defined as L squared over D. So if T is larger than that diffusion time, the most important term in this sum will correspond to N equals 1. So let's just look at the N equals 1 term. <coughs> that will be B sub 1. N equals 1, we have a sine pi over 2 is 1, so that will be 2 m naught over L. And then uh, U of xt then is approximately just the four first term here, which will be 2 m naught over L times uh, sine pi x over L times e to the minus pi squared dt over L squared. And that will be the uh, solution for large enough times when we can neglect all the uh, higher order terms in N. Okay, so what does that look like? If we draw a picture, um, rather crude picture, if I draw the pipe here with the reservoir, <coughs> the uh, distribution of the dye looks like sine pi x over L. So the sine function, you know, has a peak at um, L over 2 and 0 on the ends. So there's almost no die at the ends. And then there's a lot more die in the middle, right? Little die at the end, a lot of die in the middle. So the dye has diffused. And if you look at a graph, we can uh, graph uh, the concentration versus x. It would look like a uh, sine function. So it would look like, like this. And it would be decaying in time. So everything would be decaying down in time. Okay flattening out. <clears throat> so uh, let me review then uh, th what this example is about. In the previous um, three videos, we uh, derived the diffusion equation for diffusion of dye in a pipe. And then we've uh, solved it using separation of variables uh, with the boundary conditions of the homogeneous Dirichlet boundary conditions where the two ends are connected to reservoirs and some general initial condition for the concentration. This was our solution. In this video, I'm looking at the very specific initial condition when all the dye is centered in the middle of the pipe at t equals zero and then it diffuses outward. Uh, we model that very nicely using the Dirac delta function. That allows us to do the integral for Bn uh, very quickly. And then the leading order term, which is valid when the time is larger than the diffusion time, gives us that the behavior of the die looks like a sine function over the domain that's decaying exponentially. Okay, congratulations to making it to the end of the course. Um, we've done ODEs, and now we've done PDEs. So we've covered a lot of material in this course, and I think by making it to this video, you guys have learned a lot. Thanks for watching.